Oh, y'all missed it. You know what happens when I start a video? The dog. It's very exciting. Just exciting as all this crap on my desk. I have someone turning nine on Wednesday, so today was a little bit of an early birthday celebration day. And I made a mistake, which is a rookie mistake for a mother of four children, but a special needs rookie mistake. You know, most children, you prepare them, you talk about something, and you get excited. Not Amos, because if you tell Amos something, he will drive you bananas. So we are going on a helicopter on Wednesday for his birthday. You know what that means? He want to go today, not Wednesday, not his birthday, today. So if anybody was just at the playground and heard a child screaming and hitting their mother, uh, it was him, FYI. So tonight we have Seton Tucker that is gonna be coming on, which is sort of exciting. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Murdoch, um, podcast, Impact of Influence. My friend Seton Tucker, um, who we actually met over this, but it was, there has been an HBO documentary, three episodes. I've seen two of them. And then I have not seen the Dateline that was, that's a big fat fly in here, Dateline that was Friday night. But yesterday, Seton, I was like, oh my gosh, we have got to talk about this. So I'm hoping y'all have seen it. And Seton had a very good episode um, that dropped on Thursday on her podcast where she interviews the trooper. You've watched it all. Oh, Sheila. I mean, is it not good? So Seton has interviewed the trooper, which is her last podcast episode. I mean, it's good stuff. Hi, Margaret. Yes, the HBO documentary is fan freaking tastic. It's basically it is all video 911 recordings. So I'll just, while we wait for Seton to come on. How was the party last night? Oh, it's fine. Oh, look. And Seton come on now. Um, Tammy, Tammy said I'm all over the story. So Tammy, typically Seton does, we do subscriber videos about the Murdoch mystery. But tonight I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it on the big page because this HBO documentary has like thrown me for a loop. So I just had a need for, and I wanted people to follow Seton and she has this great podcast and a partner that she does it with. And anyway, Seton. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I, mean, I finally, I binged the HBO. I'm not gonna lie, I could not get to it till this morning, but I did wake up with the time change very early and watched all three episodes and was blown away. It was amazing. So I haven't seen the third episode. I only saw two of them. But the the first one, I mean, well, Seton yesterday, I was like, have you seen this? She was like, no. It's like, oh my gosh. She said, I'm out to lunch. Well, then I started texting her every eight seconds. You could you see why I had to text you, right? Oh my gosh, yes. And I started texting you every eight seconds this morning as I was watching it because I was blown away too. Just a I mean, lot of information to digest. And I mean, first and foremost, let's just talk about Anthony Cook. Oh, what oh a gosh. gem. Just what a nice young man who I just, my heart just went out to him. I, I, I got teary and... And like, you know, goosebumps, just hearing him talk. If, if for those who are new to the Murdoch story, there was a girl who was killed in a boating crash in 20, is it 2018? I think it's 2018. Mm -hmm. um, and she, her boyfriend, she was literally thrown at impact out of her boyfriend's arms. And she was, wasn't found for seven days later. Right. And the driver of the boat who was indicted on these charges is Paul Murdoch. He was, he's, he's no longer with us. He, he was killed along with his mother. We can talk about that in a bit, but um, he said he forgave him. He forgave yeah. him. And he did say Paul apologized to him. Um, but he just, you know, his parents were able to say some 
things about Paul and the family, but he just took the high road and never said anything bad about him and said that, I guess their last interaction was, you know, Paul said, you know, I love you. And he said, you know, I love you too. And it just broke my heart. And then he could even find the good in Mallory's death. I mean, he said that he thinks that none of this corruption with all the financial crimes or any of that stuff would have come to light had not Mallory been killed in that accident. Mm -hmm. It just was heartbreaking. And Did you what, see the Dateline episode on Friday night? I have not watched that yet. and I, really, I haven't either. So really somebody just that. said, what's the difference? The HBO one, I didn't think could have been any better done. What is the name of the HBO documentary? Do you know? Low, low, low Country. And they spell it different, like L-O-W space country instead of Low Country. Low Country. Yeah, they I'm still, sure if you go into HBO and and search Murdoch, M U R D A U G H, it, it, shows, it shows up. If you do have an HBO subscription, I know not everyone does. I wish yeah. everyone did. And there was some other way to watch this, um, but it shows up as one of the new releases. So the second you log into your HBO, and it's kind of a little mirage of glass picture of it's, Alex's face. Yeah, I didn't know about what to make of that. I did love uh -huh. the graphic for that because, I, like, one of the, it, it just didn't really resemble him that much to me. It looked, it yeah, was it was weird. It was weird. I wasn't. I, wasn't I thought it was weird. Yeah, I think it was supposed to be. Not that I'm an artist. I just play one on television. I think it was supposed to be symbolic somehow of like all the parts of him and who is he. Yeah. Or that's yeah. just kind of what I thought. I, I I thought that too, but I just didn't, I wasn't. Again, everything else about this you documentary, <laughs> it's the best right. thing that has come out with the Murdoch situation so far. Hands down. They had a lot of new information. We can start off, you know, the Bowden case. Oh, that was really interesting. So they had a lot of video and mm -hmm. images. That we I was not, asking you, like, where was all this video? Right, we haven't seen that before. Video from the hospital, video from that night, video from surveillance cameras the night of the boat accident. I we mean, have it seen was... some of the videos from the surveillance camera had been released, but a lot of that stuff was brand new, including like pictures of Paul's injuries and Morgan, his then girlfriend, her hand, she had a pretty significant injury. And Connor Cook, who was another one of the passengers, had a significant jaw injury. There were a lot of mm -hmm. pictures. Well, so since that time, it was like, where are these pictures coming from? Well, Joe McCullough, the attorney for Connor Cook, who was one of the passengers, I guess was the one to leak them. I guess he didn't know. He says he didn't know that that was not supposed to happen. So mm -hmm. he has fessed up. He wrote a letter and explained to the judge there's some ongoing civil litigation regarding this boating accident and culpability from a convenience store named Parker's and also um, also the Murdoch family, I guess the for for you know possibly them kind of enabling possibly this behavior. And Paul used his older brother's fake ID to purchase alcohol that night. So there is some ongoing civil litigation with this and in the past there have been some other media some other documents that have been released right. so what's kind of interesting is i think these are two separate leaks this jim mm. mccola is fessing up like yes i leaked these documents to hbo my bad i'm fessing up telling you my part do you think but he really didn't know they were private or was that bullshit i, I really think that i buy his story I mean, I, I Liz, he wrote a letter, Seton sent it to me, and it was like, I'm sorry, I did not know that this was all under a gag order, and I released it. Right. And so there's, so McCullough. And I, he told HBO they should take it out. Well, of course, they he didn't. did. They did not. So I don't yeah. know how his relationship is standing with HBO, it might not be good. Mm -hmm. But there's other, so Tinsley, who represents the Beach family, Mallory, the, the young lady who was killed and also several of the other boaters has been accused by Parker's convenience store of leaking documents for this other documentary. It was a Vicki mm -hmm. Ward did a special and she also had some 
documents that were released. Right. Um, so Tinsley is accusing Parker's of releasing them. Parker's is accusing Tinsley of also releasing documents to Fitz News. And it's, it's getting, I think there's multiple leaks, but anyway, there's a lot of source of conflict about this and litigation. People are getting kind of ugly about this. So for those of you who don't know, there's this boat accident. This young woman is killed. The driver is Paul Murdoch. He's hammered, I would just like to say. And yeah. that was one thing that came out on the HBO special. He is clearly drunk as a coot. He's strapped on a gurney when he gets to the hospital. They're saying he was fighting. He was yelling. He was attacking. He has, he, on the video, you hear him at the scene say, can I use your phone? So now he is drunk, drunk. Yeah. He calls his grandfather. Now, when he's drunk, his friends point out his fingers do this. Yeah, and they call him Timmy, like from South Park. Yes. And oh, I they, was thinking it was like tentacles. So he no, walks they call, around. They call him Timmy, which is Timmy from South Park. That's oh, I what, thought it was Tinny, no. like short for tentacle. No, Timmy, like T-I-M-M-Y. That's what I've never watched South Park. What? I, I need to keep any brain cells I have left. So well, he's walking around know. like this, calling the grandfather, and then you're watching this hospital surveillance video, and all you see are, are his dad and grandparents, and they are popping in and out of these hospital rooms saying to anybody, don't say who was driving. Meanwhile, this girl is missing, and these assholes are trying to keep this little dickhead. Sorry, my language, but it made me so mad, and I know you've been covering the story, and I've been talking about it with you, and I'm not as, as educated on it, but I was like, this is the portrait of entitlement and parents that have encouraged it. It was really well, sad, and I then I got mad at the police. Because why are they allowing this child or young man at this point? I mean, at some point, it's like they didn't put handcuffs on him in the in the courtroom because the lawyers said no. Like, I have a little. Well, so a couple things. What I just was, was really, blown away. In what pits. was really interesting was what the cooks. So there were two cooks who were cousins on the boat. Anthony Cook, who was Mallory's boyfriend, the one who was was ki was killed and then there was also connor cook was also their cousins and so on this they have both of their parents speaking out well so i was speaking with a friend today and what was and they're pretty critical of of Alec and maggie's parenting and they actually uh connor cook's father said he believes that Alec killed maggie and paul but what's really interesting is they were high school best friends. They were best friends in high school. Right, right, right. Well, and the parents of the friends said, you know, we're, it's great for you to be a friend with him. But let me tell you something. They're yeah. going to let you burn if there's ever anything that goes on. And I really thought to myself, like, do I have friends like that? I don't think so. That's such a strange um, a strange way to be. Yeah, and the grandfather said, oh, she's gone. No one's concerned about where this young lady is. I just, I can't imagine being the kind of parent trying to do damage control. So it's the Murdoch family in South Carolina, M-U-R-D-A-U-G-H, Terry, and HBO has just come up with a, a series, a three-episode series. Seton's had a podcast for a while. It's been on Dateline a number of times, um, and this we just watched the HBO special and we're just blown away by it. Just, anyway, that really made me disappointed in the police. Yeah. It, 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 was, it was just like watching, I would say watching Alec and his father walk around and the halls of the, the, the hospital was I me because I had read the depositions where it said that their you know nurses complained they gave statements you know that they were orchestrating this whole thing right. and then you, you could kind of see it it was it was it was it was upsetting to watch mm -hmm. 
What was the last episode about? Because I haven't seen that one yet. Oh, okay. Well, so we should talk about the second episode on the... It on... has a ton of new information, Yvonne. A ton. Yeah. Tons. Okay. So the second episode was on uh, Stephen's... Oh, most of it was on Stephen's... Focus on Stephen Smith. Yes, I saw that. Young, young man who was found dead in the middle of the road in 2015. Mm -hmm. And it still remains unsolved, but it was opened after the investigation into Maggie and Paul's death. So again, it opened up, it was a cold case, opened up years later. And so we interviewed Trooper Moore, who was also a victim of fun. Alec Murdoch stole his money. Right. Now but return. Uh, he still has a really terrible workers comp case that is ongoing. And he talked to us about some of that. We have a lot of problems with our workers comp system in South Carolina, but he also was one of the first investigators on the scene after Stephen Smith was killed. Mm. And right. he was very strong saying, nope, this is no way, definitely not an automobile accident. He was actually the person who had words with the pathologist. When the pathologist ruled it a hit and run, he argued with the pathologist. He had been a career highway patrol person. He, you know, been investigated lots of automobile accidents and said this looked like no automobile accident that he had ever seen. So actually when they got there, they were called to the scene. They said, no, this is an automobile accident. You can leave. And then they called him back several hours later and said, oh no, come back. This is now been ruled an automobile accident. And then he argued with the pathologist saying this doesn't seem to be an automobile accident. Right. There's, he, he kept saying there were, for the massive head trauma, which here's what I thought, and nobody said this, but just go with me here. Stephen Smith is a young man, and he's they think he's been hit by a car on the road. Why would he have, like, no injuries except to his head? It's not like he was 18 no. inches tall. His, his shoes were still on. There right. was no And there was no injury. glass, no anything. Like, if a car yeah, had hit him, no. there would have been damage to the car and with his injuries. When you watch this episode, they have some images. There was a lot more blood that I that I yes. anticipated. And also, when you look at the position of his body, it does not look like someone who was struck by a vehicle. It looks like someone who was placed there. And struck by a baseball bat. Maybe. That I mean, was one looked, of the rumors. Yeah, yeah. I, um, and so that's somehow related because on the HBO, they talked about was, was their relationship between a Murdoch and this Stephen Smith. Stephen Smith's mother said, you know, yes, he was going on this fishing trip with this highfalutin family. He never said the name. Stephen had talked about, you know, you wouldn't believe who I've been hanging around with. Um, so that's all kind of, and then when the brother and mother were murdered, they said the day after, right? We have, we're reopening it, the Stephen Smith investigation. It wasn't the day after, it was, oh. it was I actually have Suzanne here with me, Suzanne Andrews, who is, you can come wave, Suzanne. She is with, I'm here in Charleston, we're, I'm attending the Russell Lafitte hearing, but this is Suzanne. She's, she founded the Standing for Stephen Charity. Hello. Which Hi, raised, Suzanne. Raised the money for Stephen Smith's gravestone. Oh, that's so nice. She started it just out of the goodness of her heart, and they also raised enough money for for his father's headstone as well. His father passed away three months after Stephen did from a broken heart, literally. Um, I, I heard this his sister talking about that last night. I had no idea. I did not either until I met Sandy, Stephen's mom, for the first time at the cemetery in Crockettville. And I had obviously seen a picture of Stephen's little placard, but I did not realize that, you know, about his dad. I didn't know the Smiths prior to this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, that was a nice that, thing to do. Well, yeah. I'm not finished. I'm working hard on this case. Yeah, she is like, she's beating the drum and she's really trying to get all the answers that she can. She's contacts everyone. She, I mean, she has a full-time job. She's not, <laughs> this isn't her full-time job, but she's right. really doing what she can to get answers for Stephen. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, I think the more we talk about it and put it out in the open, which is tonight, I was like, I'm, we're going to put this on the big page. Like, I, people need to be asking questions. And I would have tried to look better had I known I was going to be. I forgot my selfie light, all the stuff. <laughs> selfie light. I'm going to say one thing. Well, like, 
we have a Facebook page for Steven. It's standing okay. for Steven. Mm -hmm. And um, anybody that has any information, I, like they can private message me, call me. I think my email address is on there. Like any information, I don't care how small it may be. Or yeah, that's great. Just please anonymity. I promise. I've had several people reach out to me and uh, I guarantee anonymity and um, anything that Good. anyone that can help solve the case, we would greatly appreciate. It. Yeah. Well, thank you for giving your thank time. You. All right. I'm going to stop. <laughs> You're good. Well, and what All is right. the Facebook page again? The Stephen Smith page? What's it called? It's called Standing for Stephen. Standing for Stephen. Yes. Um, um, so what was the third episode of HBO? Okay, this one has some crazy stuff. I'm going to get my notes for this one because I was like, whoa. Because, so Jim Griffith, it's all about the murders of Maggie and Paul, but Jim Griffith, the attorney for Alec Murdoch, gives this interview. So in recent weeks, there's been a lot, and I'm working on a more, I, I haven't had time, but I'm working on an up-to-date timeline. But Jim Griffith is Alec's attorney, and he gives this interview for HBO which seems to contradict some of the most recent stuff that has come out about the timeline. So that Ooh. was kind of, kind of crazy. He said, hold on, let me, let me find my notes. Um, what he says happened. Okay. So recently back up recently, there was a report it's come out and we haven't seen this video. There's a video. She froze. Hold on. I'm going to remove you and then you're going to come back. I can see. I can hear you now. So, okay. Paul Murdoch goes down to check on a friend's dog in the dog kennels. And in the. I can hear you. Yeah, you keep freezing. I don't know. It might be my internet connection. I'm in Charleston. Okay. I, don't, I don't know if I have the best internet connection. Okay, did you catch that about this video that was... Okay, there was a video taken from Paul Murdoch's phone. He was down at the dog kennels taking a video of a friend's dog. And in the background, you can hear a conversation between Maggie and Alec. Now, is this video... Did they release this on HBO? No. No, this was in court documents. So okay. now the timestamp that, and, and what Alex's attorney is saying, the timestamp on this video is 844. Okay. And I don't know, we, we have, no one's seen this video. We just know of the existence. Alex's attorneys have described this video as being like convivial in nature. I had to look that word up, but that apparently means friendly. Oh. Uh, so on this HBO documentary, we get kind of a different timeline from Jim Griffith. Jim Griffith says that Alec came home from work at 6.30 and that Paul and Alec were, you know, out on the property. They were checking on some fields. They had dinner. And then he says there were phone records um, documenting all this. He says after dinner, Maggie left the house to go to the dog run. And then Paul left the house because he just likes to be outside. He doesn't really know why Paul left the house. Um, and then Jim Griffith says that Alec laid down on the couch, watched TV, and fell asleep. He says that Alec woke up at 9 p.m. So this is not 8.44. He woke up at 9 p.m. and wanted to go um, check on his mother. His mother lives in Varnville, which is approximately like a 15, 20 minute drive away from their home. Uh, and she suffers from dementia, but has round the clock care. So she says she try. he says he tries to call Maggie and Paul, but he did not get any answer. So he sent a text message to Maggie and says, he'll be right back. And so at 9.03 to 9.21, he was, Alec was on the phone. At 9.21, he calls the nurse at the parents' house and says, let him in. And then on 9.41, he is back on the phone call. 
And then at 10 and one, there was a video of Alex entering the house, which was still locked. Then he got back in his car and he went to the dog kennels where he discovered the body. And we do have documentation that at 10 of seven, there was a phone call to 901. So, and it, I'm still digesting something. So the, the timeline seems to be off and something doesn't make sense with this timeline. Obviously, if there's this video at 844, that contradicts what Jim Griffin says in this, in this. So when did, when did Alec arrive at his mother's? Well, it says he called at 921. He called the caregiver to say, let him inside because he was outside. So and I it guess took 20 minutes to get there. Yes, it took 20 minutes. It says he was on the phone from 9.03 to 9.21. So then that means when he said he was asleep on the couch, he won't. He was out at the dog kennels from 8.30 to 9. Well, he says they had dinner at 6.30. He watched some TV, fell asleep on the couch, and didn't wake up till 9. But now there's this video. So he was lying. He had to be awake because the video is at 8.44. We haven't seen this video. This oh. is just what we've been told by oh. Jim, by the attorneys, that there's a video showing. So again, there seem to be some contradictions in stories. Oh, it's only oh, three no, miles, it's, Jenny? It's, no, it's more than three miles. No, it's way more than three miles. It's a 20 minute drive, 15 to 20 minute drive. 15 to 20 minute drive. That's, oh. that's time to get there. Hmm. So there's definitely some stuff. And they do describe some of the injuries that in more detail than we've heard. Um, I guess Paul was shot at close range. He was found in the dog kennels. He was all, they, they described him as being almost decapitated. Um, and Maggie was shot multiple times, um, like leg, wrist. And then I think it was almost like five times, leg, wrist, lots of different places. And then she, um, and then the last two shots were at close range. So Sue just said that this audio of the video was on Dateline. Okay, I ha I know, and I haven't watched the Dateline. And you know what Dateline also has? The video of the Eddie Smith, Alec debacle of this murder-suicide thing, where you can see Eddie Smith's vehicle on these church video cams. I've just heard, I haven't watched it myself. Oh. Last two shots to Maggie when she was down, huh? Yeah, close, at close range when she was down. Then, well, now we gotta watch Dateline. So tell us what you're doing tomorrow then. So tomorrow we have Russell Lafitte's hearing. He is the banker who has been indicted, first one indicted on federal charges uh, on some of these financial crimes. He served as a conservator to, to several of Alex's clients where the money went missing. Um, it was really interesting. There's a YouTube video that came out this weekend where he had an interview with his cousin and they was clearing his name, he wanted to clear his name. So it, it was unusual that they would release this video just, you know, two days before his hearing set to start. So tomorrow mm -hmm. is pre-trial motions and uh, he, Russell is seeking to have some audio or, or that he, he recorded some of the meetings with the bank that he says helps his case in some way, I think may implicate others at the bank. Of course, the bank is fighting not to have that audio released, but it's real interesting because I don't understand exactly why, but the feds don't want this released either. So it'd be real interesting to hear what they have to say. Hmm. Somebody said you could see Alex's head wound, too. I'm real curious to see that. I, I, you know what? Everyone said that we had actually had an ER doctor on our podcast. That he did sustain some sort of trauma. Now, I don't think it was serious. I mean, obviously, he was out of the hospital very quickly. But he did actually sustain an injury, according to the ER doctor who looked at. And we just got a very short glimpse of the records you know, just whatever Harpootland and Griffin, obviously those are protected under HIPAA. Um, and 
people really question this because he was in he was in the courthouse after this suicide murder for hire thing happened mm -hmm. and you could not see any sort of visible wound but I do think that there was something it was some sort of maybe a grazing injury that happened hmm. well I'm real curious to see I've got to watch Dateline now um, I know I have it on I'm going to try to watch it tonight because well I Check in tomorrow. Maybe we can do a little subscriber video tomorrow because I yes, want to see I'll, what happens tomorrow. The hearing starts at 11. Okay. I don't know how long it will last. This is new. I've never been to federal court. Apparently, if you do go to federal court, I've learned this. Thank goodness I know beforehand. You cannot wear, you have to wear closed-toed shoes. That's a thing. You cannot, you have to have, your, you can't wear, um, you can't wear sleeveless. You have to have your arms covered. And I don't know if, Charleston is super strict, but I've also heard no dresses above the knee, and you might even have to wear pantyhose. I'm not totally sure on that. That's like going to the Vatican. I know. So I'm wearing long pants and just a button-down shirt. And I, I wish they would enact these rules for the Walmart. Might be good. <laughs> mm -hmm. It'd be good. Well, thank you for coming on. I'm going to try to get Amos to bed early. I'm trying to. I live by the old time at night for a while. So we get to bed earlier. Well, that's that's always good, right? Mm -hmm. Wake that's up, right. have a little bit more time in the morning. Yes, and not have to drag people out of bed. Yes. All right. Well, have a good night. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Seton. All right. Bye, y'all.